We'll come along to the Ultimate Linux Newbie Guides website and this is the installation tutorial for Ubuntu 13.04. If you haven't already checked out our website, head on over to www.linuxnewbieguide.org. That's www dot linuxnewbieguide.org. Okay, so this installation tutorial is going to teach you how to install Ubuntu 13.04, which is the uh, release from April of 2013, onto your PC. Now, for this installation tutorial, we are assuming that you already have Microsoft Windows uh, of some description on your PC installed. So you're running a normal PC, um, and what we've got here is we've just in we've just popped the CD in from for Ubuntu into the PC and we started the PC back up so we rebooted the PC and now it's it started from the CD rather than going into Microsoft Windows. Uh, what you'll get after a while, after about a couple of minutes usually, is a screen that looks pretty much like this. On the left hand side, if your native language isn't English, you can choose from many different other languages uh, there on the left. Uh, just click on one of those and you'll be transported to have a different language than the default, which is English. The other two options are try Ubuntu and install Ubuntu. Obviously, if uh, you've never ever played with Linux at all and you'd like to try this flavor of Linux, which is called Ubuntu, then you can simply click on the try Ubuntu uh, option and it will run it from the CD-ROM. Now, if it's a bit slow, don't expect that to be the same once you have installed it. Bear in mind that once it's running from a CD-ROM, it's a lot slower than running from your hard disk drive. So yeah, just bear that in mind when you're trying out Ubuntu. It's just to give you a feel for Ubuntu. Okay, so uh, once uh, we're, we're expecting that you've already played about with Ubuntu, you're happy with it, and you know what it looks like on your computer, and you're ready to go on and install. So let's click on the Install button, and the next screen that you will see uh, gets us started with uh, uh, Ubuntu. Okay, so this next screen here prepares us for installation of, of Ubuntu. As you can see, there's a few green ticks here, uh, which is good. If you don't have the three green ticks here, then it usually indicates something is of a problem. So this first one here, uh, do you have at least 5.4 gig available drive space? That is important because if you don't have sufficient drive space, then you probably won't be able to install uh, Ubuntu on this particular machine. Uh, so you might have to free up some more disk space. If you've got some... Uh, junk on your Windows machine that you you uh, you don't like, don't need anymore, then try and free it up from there. Um, also, if you have a laptop computer, it is important that you have it plugged into a power source as this t this task does take a little bit of time and there's nothing worse than having going through halfway through of an installation and it failing on you because the batteries run out. Finally, it's not essential to have the installer connected to the internet whilst it's installing Ubuntu. But it certainly does help. Uh, for example, if it needs to download drivers for a wireless card or uh, some 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 other uh, third-party software, it can do that whilst it's installing your system and makes it much uh, more ready to go. Uh, so make sure it's connected to the internet. If this last one isn't connected, it isn't saying it's connected to the internet. Uh, one tip for you: if you do have a wireless uh, adapter on and it's a, a laptop which you're using, a laptop or a notebook, then try just plug it into your uh, wire, wire, wireless modem. Now that way um, you, you can use the Ethernet cable and uh, it will be able to get onto the internet briefly. Now you'll notice on the screen down here after these options there is a final uh, option here that says install this third-party software and it talks about mp3 plugins as well as a few other things uh, like Flash. Now the ideal is to have this ticked, so if you have um, a connection to the internet here, but that's not, if that's ticked green, then you should tick this box as well. That means that if you've got any specific drivers, such as wireless card drivers, uh, whether you want Flash player, an MP3 player playback, anything like that, that you'd like to have, uh, it's best that you tick this box right now, uh, acknowledging that these are these are proprietary uh, software, they're not open free software like we talk so much about on the Linux Newbie Guide website. So um, it will install this software for you uh, and make it hassle free. So if you intend on playing animated, animated websites with Flash content on them, MP3 audio, anything like that, you should tick this option. Um, 
if you've got lots of free bandwidth and um, time is um, time is not a big problem to you, you can also tick this download updates whilst installing, which basically means since the software came out in April, in this case, um, there has been a number of updates. We're doing this video in June, so um, there's, there's a couple of months at least there worth of updates to download. So as you can imagine, um, that would, that would take some time to download all of those security and software updates. So for the purpose of this video, we aren't going to uh, tick that box, but if you've got a little bit more time, then perhaps that ticking that box is a good idea. Once you've uh, once you've seen all the three ticks here and uh, you've ticked this box at the bottom, it's time to move on. Let's press the continue button and go on to the next step, which is to partition the drive. Now, if you've been reading the Linux Newbie Guide website, again, the website address is www.linuxnewbieguide.org, you'll have seen that we've uh, talked a bit about partitioning. Uh, very briefly on this video, just, just to say what partitioning is all about. Partitioning, basically, you, if you have Microsoft Windows installed on your PC, which in this case we do, um, imagine that... Um, the hard drive is seen by Microsoft Windows and when, when the people who installed Windows on your computer did so, they probably utilized 100% of that disk inside your computer for Microsoft Windows. Now that's fine. It means that, you know, if you've got a 500 gig hard drive, all 500 gigs are available to Windows. The only problem with that is if you want to install Linux, well, there's no free space available to Linux. There's no blank space. Now, that means that um, even although you've got free space in Windows, as in unused space, you've got lots of free space. When you look in my computer, you can see that only 50% or 60% of your hard drive is used. Well, that's one thing, uh, but that, that doesn't mean it's free space for Linux. What we have to do is a thing called repartitioning in order to give a, a space for Linux and a space for Windows on your hard disk drive. So the, the uh, what, what we're what we can see here in the installation type window, um, it gives us a, a number of options. The default option is this one here, which we won't be choosing for this tutorial, and that's to erase disk and install Ubuntu. So as we've got Microsoft Windows already on this drive, uh, this one here is going to um, erase that Microsoft Windows partition and all of the data within it. So if you've got movies, music, documents, everything, uh, Microsoft Windows, obviously, it's going to delete all of that and um, start from scratch, basically. Not probably what you want to do. So you can ignore the other two options there. The option that you probably want is this one here, something else. So let's click on that one and it will give us a view of the partitions on the hard drive. Okay, so as you can see here, Microsoft Windows, or NTFS, as it, as it calls the partition type, is taking up 100% of this disk, as delineated by this green bar at the top. It's taking up, I've got a very small hard drive for this example, only 8.6 gigs, and as you can see, 100% of it is being taken up by Windows NTFS. All right, so we want to keep that Windows uh, partition on our computer so we can continue to use Windows and use all the files that are on there. You might have amassed lots of music, movies, documents, so forth. We want to keep all of those. So what we need to do is click on this change button down at the bottom here. So let's just click that now. And then we have an option here. Uh, sorry, one thing I should note out to you is in this case, um, I'm hardly using this Windows partition at all. It's uh, understood that I've only used 43 megabytes of that partition. You might be closer to 90% or 80%. If that is the case, you might want to go reboot right back into Windows and delete some stuff that you really don't need uh, to try and find some more free space for Linux, if that's possible. Okay, so back to change. Uh, so we've got uh, quite a lot of free space to deal with here. We've got the best part of 8 gigs. And we can now choose the size that we want to resize the Windows partition to. So 8.5 eight gig is the size of it right now, or 8590 megabytes. Let's change that to around 2500 or 2.5 gig. Now this, this is a very small size in comparison to your hard drive. It probably be uh, 25,000 megabytes or maybe even um, even more, maybe 250,000 megabytes if you've got a larger hard drive. So yeah, th th there'll be lots of difference in size here. So this is just choosing a proportion of the hard drive. So let's just uh, say that we're going to reduce the size of the Windows uh, partition from 8.6 or 8.5, megabytes to 2,500. And we're also instructing Linux not to use this partition. The reason why we're saying not to use the partition is it's because it's the Windows partition. We don't want to touch it. So let's say OK to that. 
Okay, and what it says is before you can select a new partition size, any previous changes have to be written to disk. You cannot undo this operation. Please note that resize operation may take a long time. So, yep, yeah, that's fine. We're just going to press OK or continue there. And it will then start to resize that partition. Okay, so now you can see what's happened. Uh, the Windows partition, which used to take up 100% of the 8 gig hard drive, has now been reduced in size to 2.5 gig, as you can see by the green line here. The rest of the space on the hard drive, and the majority of it, 6 gig in this case, is now free space. So what we want to do is allocate that space, that free space, instead of nothingness, to be a Linux partition. So let's press the plus icon here, and we can choose um, most of the hard drive, or we can choose some of the hard drive, or we can choose all of the hard drive to be the partition. Now, in this case, I'm going to choose approximately 5,600, say, megabytes. So it's 5.6 gig. Okay, so we'll just say, we can accept the defaults, we can say it's a primary or a logical or beginning of the space or whatever. Um, the default here to use the ext4 journaling file system is the latest uh, Linux uh, file system, so again, that's fine. Uh, there's lots of advanced options here, but the mount point in this case should just be slash the home directory, the, the, the very first directory of the, win, uh, of the Linux file system. Okay, so let's just press all right, okay and that will create that Linux file system. Okay, now you can see that Linux has, inst has installed itself in the secondary partition. Okay, so I, as you could see, I didn't allocate absolutely every bit of space that was on the disk, and you can see here, here's Windows, here's the space we're gonna allocate for Linux, and at the end, I've left a bit of free space. And you're probably wondering why that is. Well, watch this. I'll press plus again, I'll allow the full amount of space, which is 490 megabytes, not very much at all. I'll use the swap area, which is this option down here. Okay, so what's a swap area? Well, a swap area basically um, is, in Windows, it's a file. And uh, in Linux, we use a separate file system, and that's to avoid things like fragmentation. I won't get too technical on you, but basically, this allows uh, your machine, when it's running out of available system memory, RAM, it uses a, a page file or a page area. Uh, in Linux, we call it swap. And basically, that page file is, is memory available to the computer on the physical hard drive as opposed to the memory chips inside your computer. Now, Using the hard drive as a memory alternative is pretty slow in comparison to the RAM chips inside your computer, but it does help the computer swap in and swap out information if it needs to. So it's pretty important to have a swap disk. Um, they are available if, uh, if you run out of memory, which can happen quite a lot. So let's press OK with making our swap area. The recommendation for the size of your swap uh, disk, if you are creating one yourself, is around uh, about half the size of your memory. If you've got decent amount of RAM in your PC, then probably half that size is is, is good. If you've got a, a very small amount of memory, then probably double the size of memory. So for example, if your PC uh, has an eight gig RAM chip in it, then you probably want to have uh, around four gigs um, here rather than 490 megabytes, uh, about four gigs of swap. If your PC has only about two gigs of RAM, so um, a little bit on the less side, then probably a good idea to give it more swap. Give it about four gigs. All right, so um, there you go. Press OK, and it will now create that swap partition. Okay, so now you can see that finally all of the partitions are made. You can see here the Windows file system has now been reduced from 100% of the disk down to about, probably about a quarter of the disk. Then there's the Linux partition, which is the largest partition, which is 5.5 gig in this case. And then finally we also created a final file system for the swap. Okay, so that was the alternative to RAM. If we run out of RAM, we can use the swap partition. And Linux will automatically utilize that when it can. So you can see here, this is probably the, diff the most difficult stage of the installation of Linux on any computer. Uh, and Ubuntu has made this process an awful lot easier. Obviously, you can tell that you wouldn't have to do any of this. Um, you just simply accept the defaults of erase the disk and allow the, con the process to continue. 
if you didn't already have a Microsoft Windows operating system on your PC. But because we do, we need to make space for the Linux system on your computer, and that's exactly what we've done here. Okay, so if you're all happy with that, you can simply click on the Install Now button. Okay, so this is one of the final steps before it installs all of the data onto the hard drive which you've now set up. You can see it's asking you where in the world you are and if it has an internet connection and you're using a machine which is already set up uh, for your location then it will probably put you in the right location. Um, for this case it has it set me right to Auckland which is where I'm uh, doing this from so you that's great if uh, if you if, if it's picked you up and it's put you somewhere which is incorrect just simply click on the place in the map and it will move over to the other place um, wh which is appropriate for you so I'll just go back to Auckland you can alternatively type in the name down here if it's not easy to pinpoint your location Okay, so now you just choose the keyboard layout for your computer. In this case, I have a UK keyboard. It's also a Macintosh keyboard. So I'll just uh, scroll down here till I can see the Macintosh keyboard. Okay. English, UK, Macintosh there. If you've got a standard keyboard, you may not have to change this at all. Finally, just type in your name. And if you'd like to have a name for your computer, just pop it in here. And then if you'd like to have a username, just pop it in there. Password. Make it a nice, strong password, not like me. It's recommended that you leave the default require my password to log in uh, so that you have to type your password in every time. But if you're feeling a bit lazy, you can always choose the login op automatically button. Okay, so the next part of the process is simply to copy all of the files from the CD-ROM, which is in the drive, or the USB stick if you've used the USB stick, onto the hard disk drive. This takes quite a while uh, because there's quite a lot of information uh, squeezed up on that CD-ROM. Okay, so the file copy process is just completed. Now all it does is it installs the system onto the machine. This also takes a little while, so bear with it. Okay, so Ubuntu has now been completely installed, as you can see by the update here. Installation is now complete. Click on the restart button and the computer will reboot. And when you reboot your computer, you'll see two options, or maybe even more, depending on other operating systems which you may have installed. But predominantly the idea of the message that you get when you start up your computer is that you can choose between running Microsoft Windows and running Ubuntu 13.04 and you can make the choice simply by using your cursor keys that's the up down arrow on your keyboard and you just choose the option which uh, you want to go into so every time you restart your computer from now on you're going to see that message if you choose to do nothing it will choose the default operating system okay congratulations if you're seeing this screen that means you've successfully booted into the new Linux operating system 13.04 Ubuntu okay so um, you can see that the account which I started up um, my ultimate Linux newbie guide uh, account has been created there and um, I'll just type my super secure password in uh, don't tell anyone it's a password <laughs> okay and then once you type your password in it's correct uh, you'll see the new Ubuntu 13.04 desktop Okay, so there's the Ubuntu Unity desktop on Ubuntu 13.04, and that's exactly how it should look. Uh, so if you're seeing something similar, congratulations and well done. I've been Alistair Ross, and this is the video tutorial on installing Ubuntu 13.04 for your PC with Windows already pre-installed. Thanks very much for watching, and do check out our website, www.linuxnewbieguide.org, for all the latest tutorials, hints and tips, and of course, all these video guides uh, on how to get the most out of your Linux system. Thanks for watching.